off to chew five gum. New five gum. Stimulate your senses. Established a unique group of lay religious men dedicated exclusively to education, the Brothers of the Christian Schools. Today, the educational movement that he began directly impacts close to a million people and continues to inspire all Catholic educators. Born in Reims, France, into a wealthy and influential family on April 30th, 1651. privileged upbringing. The oldest of 11 children, he was named after John the Baptist, the prophet who heralded Jesus, something he himself would do later in life. He would become the herald of Christ, bringing the good news of the gospel to poor children all over Europe and eventually to the world. At first, look at this crowd. was tutored at home, and then received a formal education at the College des Bons Enfants in Reims. He decided early on to become a priest. In 1670, at the age of 19, he moved to Paris so that he could study at the Sorbonne, the University of Paris, while residing at the prestigious seminary of Saint Sulpice. But when his parents died 18 months later, 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> became responsible for the family estate and his six younger brothers and sisters. So he moved back to his hometown and completed his studies there at Reims University, which no longer exists. He was ordained a priest on April 9, 1678 at Reims Cathedral, and he earned a licentiate in theology in 1676 and a doctorate in 1680. Just three weeks after his ordination, his close friend and spiritual advisor, Nicholas Roland, died. In his will, Roland asked, My name's Scott Bradford. I'm 19. Well, I'm going to be 20 in, like, December. ...to oversee a group of nuns that Roland had formed and established in Reims. They needed guidance to attain official recognition from civil and church authorities. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider does. took on the task and in the process learned much about the poor and about the educational situation in Reims. In March of 1679, I met Adrian Nayel at the sister's residence, a layman who had worked in Rouen providing education for poor children for many years. When he learned that a wealthy widow who was related to Penny. 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 What shall not be Zinga? Had asked Nayel to consider founding a charity school for boys in Reims. What are you doing on the computer? Go outside, so beautiful! Yeah! Yeah! Invited Niall to stay at his home so that they could consult with others in the town on how to start the proposed school. Wow, are you Niall's help was effective, and the school was soon opened. Before long, a second wealthy woman in Reims told Niall that she also would endow a school. But only if this guy moaned at least this loud. Oh! I would ensure that her money would not be squandered or wasted. Carson, as perhaps the most anti Hitler, but also the most anti abortion candidate, would you be in favor of aborting baby Hitler? Oh my goodness. I'm not in favor of aborting anybody. Mr. Not even Hitler, okay. Do you think that you were let Pro Hitler. Freed, but somewhat reluctantly. Gradually, and without really being aware of it, he found himself being drawn onto a very different path that would take him into the world of the poor, a world of disadvantaged students, 
uncultured teachers, and parents chronically oppressed by poverty. Alcohol, liquor, booze. that the teachers of these new schools in Reims were struggling, that they lacked leadership, purpose, and training, and he found himself taking steps to help this small group of men with their work. He invited the teachers into his home for a retreat and some basic teacher training, and later he moved into a new house with them, and the community became known as the Brothers of the Christian Schools. Before long, the brothers became concerned about their future stability and financial security. It was easy for just walking home from work. It's a pretty nice day, a little bit cold, but you know. Oh, hang on. What is that? Oh, fuck yeah! Let's talk about trusting in God's providence. After all, he was a wealthy man by birth, whereas they were poor, with no skills and no prospects. If the schools should fail, they would be back on the streets. In 1683, <laughs> began to give away his wealth to help the poor of Reims and beyond. In the winter of 1683-1684, he used the bulk of his family inheritance to feed the poor during a particularly severe famine. He gave away his entire fortune and so quickly and irrevocably joined his brothers in real poverty. Now they would all be fully dependent on God alone. God, he said, led him in an imperceptible way and over a long period of time, so that one commitment led to another in a way that I did not foresee in the beginning. Church authorities were suspicious of and resisted this new form of lay religious life, and the educational establishment resented the brothers' innovative teaching methods and their insistence on educating people regardless of their ability to pay. But the small community was by now operating a good number of successful parish-based schools for the poor in and around Reims. In 1686, the brothers professed their first vows at Notre Dame Church in Lessa. Later, the brothers opened schools in Paris and throughout France. Gotta get dead. And the brothers would face many challenges, controversies, and setbacks, including legal battles with those who saw the tuition-free schools as a threat to their livelihood. But the mission and the work continued. In the year 1691 in Paris, money was in short supply, and many brothers left. The situation seemed bleak, but... Dick! Nicholas Foyard and Gabriel Drolin made what has come to be called the heroic vow, that they would live and work together to establish this society even if they should have to beg and live on bread alone. We are concerned about any question of excessive police violence. Do you hear what I hear? We want bread. Come here. I'm Brett. His brothers succeeded in creating a network of schools throughout France that featured the teaching of reading in French instead of Latin, which was the norm. Students grouped according to ability, the integration of religious instruction with secular subjects, and well-prepared teachers with a sense of vocation and mission. Please! Ah! Don't do that! Stop! You're an ass! You're an ass! Don't even don't do that to me!
also pioneered programs for training lay teachers, Sunday classes for working young men, and one of the first institutions in France for delinquent youth. In 1715, drdeuce.com, 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 drdeuce.com. Dr. Deuce.com. Dr. Deuce.com. Dr. Deuce.com. Left Paris and retired to Saint Jean in Rouen. There he continued to write, to teach novice brothers about prayer, and to minister to prisoners. Four years later, racked by asthma and chronic rheumatism, his health declined. As he lay dying, he was asked if he accepted his sufferings. He responded with the last words that he will ever say, Yes, I adore God guiding me in all the events of my life. Sometimes standard shock absorbers aren't enough. That's why Monroe makes these big goodies. Now, anytime you have to carry something heavy like a big old fat trick you might have picked up when you were just horny at night and couldn't get lucky. Well, you just took your air hose and put it up as woo-woo and made him just puff out even more. Now you could just stick it here and just go, oh, oh my goodness, is that heaven? Is that a fun goodie? Take that home and your missus will just forget about everything. Oh, I tell you, I had one of these at home, I can't tell how many years ago. I had it at home and just to sit on it every night and it just lift me up to the sky and I'd shriek with delight. It was heaven. Just my air hose and my Monroe. It's all you need for happiness. Think about it. Well, died on Good Friday, April 7, 1719, age 68. His life's journey had taken him places he could not have imagined 40 years earlier. It is the context in which words are spoken that give them the power or meaning. I love you, dog! was buried on Holy Saturday in a side chapel of the local parish church, St. Sever. Since it was Holy Week, the more solemn funeral rituals were delayed until the following week. Throughout Rouen, and soon throughout the society, word spread, the saint is dead. And what is his legacy? He left behind a small community of some hundred men grouped into 23 communities that called itself the Brothers of the Christian Schools a group that was not yet officially recognized by either the church or the state, and a number of mostly parish-based schools for poor boys, schools that were only fully appreciated by those who attend them. But the impact of his life, work, and influence was just beginning. Today, 300 years later, there are approximately 6,000 Christian brothers and 77,000 lay colleagues participating in over 1,000 LaSallian ministries spread around the world serving almost a million souls, most of them children. I'm going to jail! Charism, educational spirituality, and extensive writings inspired Catholic educators not only in his own time, but continues to inspire educators from many different traditions today. Stuffed in your face as usual. I gotta have a good meal. Garfield, you fat cat. You are so big and fat. Why are you so fat? I eat, John. It's what I do. It's time to kick Odie off the table. Don't do it, Garfield. That's our pet dog, Odie. You're going into orbit, you stupid mutt. Gotta get the meal. Time for an ant. I'm a cat who loves to snooze. Garfield, lazy cat. I hate alarm clocks. I'm man hungry. I want some lasagna. You're eating us out of house and home. Garden field. Enough with the chit chat. Let's get some grub going. Where are the three cheese seats on? I ate Dutch food. Where are the taco shells? I ate Dutch food. Where did all the hamburger helper go? You're such a bad kitty, that's it, I had it with you, that does it, I'm done, that's the last straw, Raphael. was canonized a saint in 1900, and was named the patron saint of all teachers in 1950.